Lisa Irmani here with the Breakthrough Life Coach. Thank you so much for taking part in this video. Um, today I wanted to talk about something that I think is uh, very important and it's this idea that we all have the ability to be both light and dark at the same time. And um, I always say this, I'm not a religious person, but I do consider myself to be very spiritual. I know that I have a metaphysical dimension to myself. I know that I am not all matter, flesh and bone, that there's something more to me. And I appreciate that. And I see that the animated aspects of me are really nothing without the spiritual part of me. And then I also need my central nervous system, my brain. I need oxygen. I need red blood cells to carry oxygen throughout my organs to keep everything working. So I see myself as a multidimensional human being. I understand that I have a personality and that my personality has been shaped by many things. Yes, biology, but in my opinion, very much by my environment. Not my fault, it is what it is. Sort of like a cell on a Petri dish that the fabulous Bruce Lipton talks about when we consider epigenetics, right? Not our fault, it's not your fault either. Not your fault if you were born to a hostile environment that was not conducive to um, developing in a healthy way. It's not your fault. And so I wanted to talk about why it's, so, why it's so important for us to accept that aspect of us, that shadow self, why it's important for us to consider the phrase or you know, there but for the sake of God go I. Why is that such a profound fa uh, phrase and how can it help us on our healing journey? And what I've discovered is that when we are when we are willing to say yeah i am both light as well as dark and yeah i can do i can be very good but under particular circumstances i can be very bad or i can do things that i never thought that i would do you know think about somebody who's starving would you steal if you were starving would you steal if your children were starving under the right situations, the things that you that don't threaten you right now, the things that you did not have or, or with you felt threatened by not having, like food for your children or whatnot, under the right circumstances, you might actually do something that you wouldn't ordinarily do. And I think that's where the phrase there, but for the sake of God, go I. I think the, one of the important lessons in there is that that's why it's so important to like drop value judgments like do what you can to catch yourself if you're judging other people if you have a critical eye you know and you are judging people discerning is different than judging discerning sounds like I'm aware that this person is adversarial and I'm aware that this person is confronta confrontational and I'm aware that this person is hypervigilant and is very sensitive and doesn't trust people, which means that I can be considered a threat. I can discern that. Um, judging is that person's an a-hole. That person's a moron. That person's a jerk off. That person's the b-word. You know, that's that's judging, right? So there's a huge difference. But those of us who are really, really trying to evolve, and those of us who are really, really trying to transcend and move past the pain and suffering and darkness from the past, I think it's really, really important that we take a long, hard, conscious, cognitive, deliberate look at our own shadow self. There are people that we know, we all know, that have done terrible, terrible things, right? I come from men who have spent time in Sing Sing prison. I come from men who have been in jail because of drug dealing um, and dis distrib distributing drugs, drug dealing, possession, drug abuse, alcoholism, domestic violence. That's in my family history. I come from suicide, right? And it's important that when we hear things like this about other people in society, our first knee-jerk reaction might be, how could they? And I would never do that. 
or that guy is a mess, or this person's disgusting. But I think there's a softer way to approach this, and the softer way is to just simply not judge. Because we don't know what we might do under the exact same conditions. So under the exact same conditions, would we have taken the same course of action or might we have, right? We don't know. But I do know that when we suspend judgment and when we consider that I can't judge other people, but what I can do, and I think this is where a lot of us struggle, especially codependents and empaths, and people who are trying to be spiritually aware, is we struggle with the boundary. So if I've identified that this person has come from difficult beginnings, and I've identified that this person can do some pretty terrible things, where do I draw the line with this person? And I think that we have to be aware that people who are below the veil, who are acting out of their programming, who can hurt us, who have hurt us, I think it's important that we recognize that we have to self-preserve. So there's nothing wrong with setting a boundary with somebody who has been affected by their background, who is also unaware as to how their background has hurt them. Because sometimes people who have been abused become people who abuse. And sometimes it's very, very bad. Think about somebody who has high narcissistic traits. Think about a psychopath or a sociopath they have been affected by the past some you know there's there's a big debate about it some people say that you know narcissists and sociopaths and psychopaths are born and that may be true in some cases but there's a, there are a lot of people who believe that this type of domineering personality and abusive personality are the result of childhood experiences feeling completely abused very early on and and deciding very early on before the age of two I'm not safe here you know this is messed up this this home that I live in is not safe the people who are supposed to love me are hurting me right not their fault but many years later somebody with who is below the veil of consciousness can develop and become an adult who does hurt people and in some cases does it on purpose and actually gets a thrill out of it. So it is wise for us to learn how to develop boundaries and to feel good about being able to set boundaries with people who are in the hologram, who have not yet awakened from the past. What I'm asking people to consider is this idea that under the exact same circumstances under the same biological influences things that we could not control under you know this idea that if we were born to that person's mom and that person's dad if our genealogy if our genes right if our dna were exactly like this person's if we were a clone of this person would we behave much differently under the exact same particular circumstances. Now why is that important to consider? That's important to consider because that allows us to embrace this idea that we're not all good and that's okay. I think that so many of us struggle and I think a narcissist especially, especially struggles with I'm not perfect because there's so much shame associated with not being perfect. There's tremendous shame there. And it's the type of shame that in some cases people don't come back from, right? So it's helpful when we learn to acknowledge that we can be good as well as bad and we can be light as well as dark. And when we think about the idea that under the exact same particular circumstances, we don't know if we would have made the same choices, right? It's very important that we learn to suspend very strict ideas about good and bad and black and white thinking. When I know that I have done things that I did when I was below the veil of consciousness, I can forgive myself and I can, I can heal shame that comes with that. 
And the power in that is being able to join somebody who is also suffering with that type of shame. That's why sponsorship works, right? So when you join AA, you get a sponsor, a sponsor who's been there. Hopefully it's a healthy sponsor, you know, um, that matters. But when we are able to say, yeah, I've messed up and I've lived below the veil and I'm not perfect and I understand that my journey here is about learning to forgive myself so that I can merge more with the light that I am. And then what we do is we take that and when we're dealing with other people, we're not judging other people because we know they are but for the sake of God, go I, or they are but for the sake of circumstances, go I. And this is the way I think that we can help bridge the separation that society feels, right, in so many, in so many ways, right? Black, white, up, down, Asian, Hispanic, female, male, you know, um, you know, it, it's important that we address gay, straight, whatever, bisexual. It's important that we address this idea of non-judgment and non-criticism. But I don't think that we can get there until we've been able to help the ego understand that transcending is not equal to death really, although that's the way the ego feels. The ego feels like if I let go and I transcend, I disappear. And then who's going to protect this inner child? Who's going to protect the wounds? You know. And so it's important that on the healing journey, we do what we can to remain highly conscious of this idea that we do have a higher self and we are connected to infinite intelligence and we can access that, right? But we also have to understand that there's, we have an ego and the ego is designed to self-preserve. And when there's a lot of trauma, especially early on, when there's a lot of trauma and this little being, this little dear one has decided early on, I can't trust the world. The world is a terrible, vicious place. This child has to decide who it's going to be and opening up and becoming vulnerable is just too scary. It's, it's equal to death and we are designed by nature to survive. And people who have experienced tremendous wounds early on, their ego is all they have. The ego is protecting annihilation. In other words, like preventing annihilation. Like I have to fight you. I have to be hypervigilant. I have to attack you. I have to assume you're going to attack me so that I don't let this inner child disappear. And so those of us who are on this healing journey, it's important for us to consider the value of being able to love every aspect of ourselves, especially the parts of ourselves that are difficult to love. The more you are able to accept yourself as a flawed, imperfect, perfect human being, the less judgment you offer other people like you get it, right? That is the value that someone on the healing path offers not only themselves, but the world. So when I forgive myself and I really embrace, wow, I've done some pretty crappy things, like really nasty things when I was unconscious, when I was a love addict, when I was a codependent, when I was highly reactive, the things that I've said, the things that I've done, I've hurt people, you know, I'm not perfect. And we embrace that and we use that energy to help us heal and merge with this idea that we're all going to make mistakes and we're supposed to. That's how we ascend, right? So when we come into the realization that we've made a mistake and we learn to love the self, right? We forgive it and we allow light to shine on it, then we can ascend. We can leave, we can leave this dank energy. We can actually let it process through our body. That's another thing. Human beings, we have to learn to stay in our bodies when we're experiencing these sensations. And we have to try not to compartmentalize every sensation our body feels because that's maddening. And the mind wants to do that. The mind wants to make sense of everything. But our healing exists, in my opinion, in a very spiritual metaphysical realm. And to access that, we've got to be able to drop the mind. 
we can use the mind to help us navigate to places where we have to understand more clearly what's happening. We have to understand, I call them the links that stink. We have to understand consciously what we're dealing with. But in terms of the healing that we experience, right, so much of healing comes by way of the way that we feel. Something shifts, right? You can't put the something that shifts inside a Petri dish. As much as it would benefit science, you know, and, and some, some scientists to be able to do so, so much of our healing comes, comes way through the emotional field, which is tied to the spiritual and metaphysical realm. That's why emotions are so important. That's why my work hinges on helping people be able to access their emotions so that they can connect to this magical metaphysical realm, even though it sounds hokey pokey, it's true, so that they, connect, they can connect to this space and they can heal themselves and they can integrate. It's a beautiful thing. But it's so important for those, for those of us on the healing path and on the spiritual journey who are trying to heal from codependency and who are trying to heal from narcissistic abuse to not get stuck. We cannot identify ourselves. Once you know that you've been victimized, right, it's very important that you know that you're, you're supposed to be, be shifting and moving through that. Um, and it takes some time to get there, right? But it's important that we recognize that living our lives on the lookout for the next attack is unhealthy because that puts us in a victim role. And it's just going to keep us stuck. So the, one of the reasons that I think narcissism is so hard to cure or to help is because narcissists don't want to embrace the shadow self. And that's why I think there's so much more movement when it comes to being able to help a codependent or somebody who has high empathy and keeps attracting abusive people, it's, it's a lot easier. It's still difficult, but it's a lot easier to move someone to a place of integration and harmony, personal development and harmony, who is able to say, yep, I screwed up. Yep, I made mistakes and I'm so sorry. You know, whereas a narcissist is not able to do that. And that, and from, from their position, because they're unable to embrace the shadow self, they create chaos. They create chaos. They're living in chaos, but they're managing it because they don't know how to live any other way. But the problem is they're creating chaos in the lives of other people. And you can have one really disordered person, one really narcissistic person, take down an entire family system, you know, and just, just literally infect an entire family system, scapegoat, triangulate, it's like a mob mentality at times. You can have one narcissist in a company create complete havoc inside a company, right? And I think that all goes back to a very deep philosophical question. Can I face my dark side deeper? Can I embrace it deeper? Can I accept it? Can I enfold it? Can I love it? Can I acknowledge it? Can I merge with it and move forward? And for those of us who are able to do that, what we discover is that we don't feel so heavy anymore. We're not quick to judge people at all. We are aware when other people are being judgmental of other people. You want to make sure that you're not, you're not getting caught up in them versus me. You want to make sure that you are aware that you are, you are literally fat. We're all, we're all facets of the same diamond and there should be no competition between me and the other. We are mirrors of one another, just, just really born to different circumstances, different people, different experiences, but all on the same journey. And I think that embracing the shadow self, and loving the shadow self and accepting the shadow self is very, very powerful. And the benefit of that is we get to transcend ego. And if you can stay in alignment with this idea that you have a higher self and that you are part of the whole, just some of us are more unconscious than others, more conscious than others, more willing, than others. But then again, that also goes back to what has this person experienced? 
if you take, I mean, I was raised by a narcissistic father. And when I look at him and I listen to him, I absolutely know that there is tremendous shame in him, but I also know that he can create a lot of damage in my life, in my sibling li sibling's life. He created a lot of damage in my mom's life, right? So I know how to set a boundary with him, even though I have compassion for him. But he's not willing to look at himself. He is not willing to embrace his shadow self and say, yeah, I'm imperfect. He just cannot do it. And to move to a place, try to move to a place where, you know, you can accept that in people. That doesn't mean you like it, but you know you have no control over it. And you know that that person, the, that person's unconsciousness, if it has helped you become more conscious, it's a gift, right? And we don't often, often think about how when someone is really unconscious, that, that sparks us to become conscious. We never really think about the traffic jam, right, in the middle of the road that forces us to take a detour and then we find another path that is a half an hour closer to the home. We never really think of the road signs that way or the roadblocks or the difficult people in our lives in that light, but maybe we should. And if you do nothing else today, please consider dropping your the mind's need because the need to judge people is I think it's the way that we protect the self so I need to def I need to decide whether you're a friend or a foe and I think that's really really important we have to be able to know um, who can hurt us and who can't we've got to be able to know that so we can protect ourselves they're just there are predators on this planet it just is what it is but if we can move to a place of spiritual knowing that I'm discerning not judging that's a huge difference so if I decide not to get on the elevator with this person who my gut is don't get on the elevator, I know that I can discern, I, don't, I just don't want to get on the elevator. It feels unsafe, right? And I'm just going to honor that. But I'm not judging the person inside the elevator. This is just me discerning that this feels unsafe and me honoring it. So to, it's, it seems like there's uh, not a big difference, but there is. So if, you're, if you take nothing else away from this video, Try to think about how the mind is designed, the brain is designed to keep you safe, and how staying in a state of judgment is one of the ways that our ego is just trying to keep us safe, right? That is like on steroids when it comes to a narcissist or somebody with high narcissistic traits. That's on steroids, right? Our job is to learn how to discern friend from foe, but not to judge. This helps us move out of victim mode. So yes, you could have been, or I could have been the, a narcissistic abuse survivor, right? Or a victim of narcissistic abuse. But I wanna make sure that I'm conscious that I'm moving away from that label and out of that label so that I can experience abundance. So that I'm not like the little bird that's picking at the, picking at the bird seed who is so afraid, you know, to like drop her guard down. It's not a good vibration to live in. So I hope that this video has found you well. I hope that you feel inspired. I hope that you understand the value in not judging yourself. I hope you see the value in enfolding your shadow self. You don't have to lie anymore. You can just be. You don't have to be codependent. You don't have to worry about what your mother thinks, what your father thinks, what your siblings think. You can let them judge you, and you're not going to judge them because they're judging you. You're free. The truth is that you're enough. And the truth is that all of us are born unconscious. And the truth is we all make mistakes, right? It's just the truth. The truth is we all can do bad things, especially under particular situations. So does it make sense to judge this person or that person? Judge, not to, I'm not talking about discerning, but does it make sense to be that person at the water cooler condemning that mom who is doing what she's doing? Does it make sense to do that when if you were born to her parents and had her siblings and had her DNA and had her childhood experiences and had her food allergies or whatever, or had her ex-husband or had her kids or had, you know, her bulimia, her issues with food, you know, if you were her, would you be that much different? So this to me is like allows us to expand our consciousness 
And I think that it's going to be us, up to us, we the people, to heal the people. Because there are so many, in terms of the media, there are so many forces that, in my opinion, are doing what they can to divide and conquer. So, and it's, I don't think it's on any more on one side of the table than it is on the other side. I think there's plenty of blame, if you will, to go around or accountability to go around. And I think that what we have to remember is that if people can, or if powers can make us feel afraid, then they can control us with that fear. And so what we shoot for as human beings and as souls incarnated into physical bodies is to eliminate fear and to, and one of the ways you can do that is to just love the fact that you've made mistakes, love the fact that you've been imperfect, love the fact that you can transcend ego, love the fact that you can recover, just love the fact that you can embrace yourself. I can tell you that when I finally said, yes, I am imperfect, yes, I've made mistakes, yes, I've been afraid, yes, I haven't been the perfect mom, and yes, I wasn't the perfect wife, and I wasn't the perfect friend. You're absolutely right. When I finally accepted that, that's when my ex-husband wasn't, or my parents even, my brother, my sister, it was just like, it was okay. I was telling my truth. I am imperfect. Before my awakening, I was so afraid that I wasn't perfect. I was so afraid that you were going to judge me or that my ex-husband was going to judge me or my mother was going to judge me. I was so afraid. It was all about fear. But when I embraced my shadow self, when I embraced that, yeah, I've screwed up and I've made mistakes. I've hurt my kids. I have. I haven't been as conscious as, as I would have liked to have been. I've made some really unconscious choices out of reactivity, out of ego, a frightened ego that's just, just trying to protect the inner child. I get it. When I was able to embrace that, then it was like the power that people had over me was broken. And it really comes down to so many of our spiritual truths, like walking by faith and not by sight. The truth sets you free. Being in the world and not of the world, you know. Um, just accepting that you're enough and that you are the light. You know, it's just a beautiful way to live your life. So. I'm hoping that this video makes it easier for you to think about the times where you made choices that weren't the best, and that's okay. Think about the times that you've judged other people, and that's okay. Think about how you can merge more fully with your shadow self, and think about the power that you can feel as, as a spiritual being incarnated into this physical body when you learn the power of forgiving the self and merging with the, the, the shadow. And think about how blessed you will be when you no longer participate in the vibrational energy that is judgmental of others. I hope that this video has inspired you. Please check out my links below. If you would like to know more about me, please visit my website. And again, I'll keep the link below. You are enough, dear ones. You are enough. Namaste. Bye.